My name is Lenny. They call me. My, my name is Alan Harris. They call me Lenny. I'm from the CJP Development. I've been there 52 years. You know, and um, I was there for the hurricane. I stayed there for, for three days. The water never got as high as like they say the steps. The reason that I left is because uh, they had a lady just had heart surgery. And I had about five or six other old ladies that really would, didn't want to leave. And they told me, Lynn, if you leave, a lot of people leave with you. You know, just try to bring them to safety where they can get something to eat or something like that. So I did that. But like I said, when I left, I left my, one of my neighbors there and I, uh, a couple of more neighbors there. But I took most of them out to safety. But what I thought was safety wasn't safety. They, 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 we walked across, well really, when we walked across the development, when you got three blocks or four blocks down, getting into the white neighborhood, they never got no water in the white neighborhood. Never. They stayed dry. That's why they stayed here to make all kind of plans to do what they did. See, and we, matter of fact, when we got to the convention center, they had about 20,000 people there looking for food, looking for somewhere to, looking for a way out, looking for somebody to come help them, looking for somebody, Red Cross, Blue Cross, anybody to come. Nobody never came. People stayed there, and when you talk about looting and breaking in place, that's what they did. They looted and broke in. Most places they broke in was places to get something to eat. You know? Sure. Quite, quite naturally, you're going to find some people that see an opportunity to right. take things. Ladies, thank you very much. Yeah, but all in all, it was, opp it was an opportunity for, for, for the rich to get richer during the storm. But when I went out there, like I said, I had about 10 elderly people with me. And we, we was in a group of about 30. So I had to go out there, break in different restaurants, different uh, hotels, you know, because the they, they generator was still running. Get ice, get water, get, get uh, like, anything that was, was, was edible, like, for Vienna sizes and stuff like that. Well, what I did all that there. So we did that for, for five days at the convention center. Slept on the floor. You know, the water didn't work, so with 20,000 people, you know how the bathroom looked. Unfortunately, yeah. Yes, well... It, it, was, it was really a mess, and the police wasn't in there. Sure. We was monitoring ourselves. And if you were, if you were 20,000 people, you know that you don't know who's a criminal, who's a rapist, or who's anything. That's a lot of people to be dealing with. So we sealed off a little area for ourselves where to protect the people that we figured needed protecting, you know? And from there, on the seventh day, Somebody had came by to take pictures. They didn't know we was there, still lay in the city. And they seen all those people sitting there. They was, where did y'all come from? We didn't know you was here. Feel like, you know, there was, there was the banner. Because there was a banner already once. Sure. So I went to Arkansas with them. I stayed there about, I think, three, four weeks with them. They got, everybody got situated with the finding family members and everything. We was at Fort Smith, Arkansas. So I had a niece in Houston, so I went there. I got, when I left there, I had no money. So she, they gave me some money and everything and showed me how to get some money from Red Cross and everything. So I got me an apartment up there. And within, within uh, three months, four months, I called housing authority to see what was going on because I was on the way back. They told me to stay here, that everything, that the, the project would be open uh, soon, because nothing happened to CJP. He said, we, we about to start working on it now. They kept lying to us, kept lying to us. So I waited six months before I got off my butt to come back. But I still had a problem in Houston, excuse me. I still had a problem in Houston, but I came back. By that time, that lady who was sitting there was already standing there and they put her out. And we wanted to know why. They said, somebody stole the pipes. But nobody had stolen the pipes because the pipes was cut from under the house. It's one thing when you get under there with, with wire cutters or something like that and the pipes are bent. 
you know that's vandalism. But when the pipe is cut straight and hacksawed, that's for my that's for my worker. And I talked to a worker about it. He said, Lenny, they paid me. That's my job to take a loose the pipes and everything, and so y'all won't come back. Now this is a handle worker. Hmm. I would call his name, but I was I was I, I appreciate him telling me that. Right, you don't have to. That's not that's yeah. not necessary. And uh he said, Yeah, he said they told me to do that. He said he said, I would have never went there and messed with that project. And said, you think that that kind of activity went on throughout the complex? Throughout, throughout everything. They had an opportunity. They set, they seen the opportunity. HUD controls Hano. Hano is nothing but a yes man. HUD is the people. HUD gives the orders. And so, Hano being the Housing Authority of New Orleans. New Orleans, they just listen. See, they grant them money. Without the money from HUD, they can't do nothing. Just like I know during the vote, the ladies are gone. The vote, they, I heard today they made a statement that tomorrow that we are allocating about 12 million or more to the city. For what? This way they vote? Hmm. Now ain't that kind of strange to get it all, all, uh, uh, all of a sudden? Like tomorrow? Of course. You know what I mean? So, like I say, for as our councilman, she won election because nobody was here to vote. And which councilman is that? Stacy Head. Okay. She's against public housing because she is a, a real estate person. She got she got a lot of money invested in here, and she ready. To, she can make a lot of money. Her people can make a lot of money. That's real estate. It's close to the Superdome. It's close to the convention center. It's close to downtown. The French Quarter also. The French Quarter, that's prime land. So why should blacks be there? Get rid of them. We got an opportunity to keep them out. So the white folks voted for Stacey Head because we ain't had enough black folks. That's why she won. Because she's a high prejudice lady that got one thing on her mind, her own agenda on mind. You know what I mean? And everybody knew. That, that cost them one. She had no business winning because they didn't have no black folks in the folks against her. She was one of the people that was a uh, councilman for the people in the, across the river. She stopped them from crossing the bridge with, with Harry Lee to get to safety. And she also comes from real estate holders? She also, I, no, I'm going to be lying to you. I don't know if she's a real estate holder, yeah. but I know she's part of the problem. Well, she is from the real estate industry. Yeah, but I know for sure Stacey Head is. And that's our, all, that's our only goal is she never get elected again. I know this for sure. Because I'm, I'm campaigning now with youngsters to sign up for voting rights, everything. I don't care what you do, you sign up because she's the one who sold you out. For as a man. She's never there for us. She's never in this area. She stays right there a uh, block on St. Charles Street on, on Sony Act that never got wet. But I bet she owned a lot of property around here. So you mentioned, you know, registering young voters to vote against Stacey Head. If there were some type of recall movement, again, uh, to, to movement to effort to recall Stacey Head, would you be in favor of an effort to recall anything her? dealing with getting rid of her? I'd be in for it, but she won the vote. She won. She won the election, fair and dirty, but she won it. And are you living in CJ Peak now? Nobody's staying nobody's. in CJ Peak. But I went back and I took it. We, we was part of the seven families that took it back over when we went back in it. And they threatened to take the vouchers away from the elderly. So by them threatening the elderly, I, I, I told them, come on, let's leave. But I never, we had them went back and took, took uh, CJ Peak back you, over. You, you had occupied it, according to Hano Housing Authority New York, New Orleans, illegally, yes, I am. illegally yeah. occupied. I, well, it's no such thing as illegal if we had a lease. Right, absolutely. You know? Sure. So we did it legally. Anything we did, they did it illegally by putting us out. Absolutely. And so what would you like to see happen as an outcome of this situation with the housing market in New Orleans? and? The